Hey, what's up YouTube? Man, I'm back. I just wanted to revisit the Cadillac CTS because I just recently purchased one and I just wanted to give Cadillac the praise and accreditation the they deserve for making this thing. You know what? From the sexy back to the clean lines to that mean and aggressive front grille, I want y'all to hop in here and take a ride with me as we do a little review. As far as the interior of this car goes, there's plenty of room in the back seat for grown people to sit. I don't have small children, my, my boy is 17 and he's about six foot tall, so he can actually still fit back here with my seat all the way back to where I'm comfortable and he's still got plenty of room. As far as seating goes, you got the same luxury in the back as you do in the front. Of course, you got your power windows and you got your AC vents right there. The center console folds down just like that, nice and easy, and it's wrapped in leather too. And if you want your cup holders open, there you go. And of course, we can flip this up for some extra storage back here. And they didn't cheat you on styling because man, look at them headrests. Now that's where I spend most of my time in the front seat. We're gonna go through the passenger side so we can see what's up. I don't know what kind of wood this is, but it is nice. It's a nice dark wood and there's not too much of it all over the place. You mainly have, you know, these wood accents and then you got, uh, that's, that's the black uh, glossy plastic right there. Then you got a little bit more wood on the other side. So it's not just inundated with wood grain. There's, you know, there's different build materials here. And in the front seat, we've got that Cadillac logo right there. The headrest just like we do in the back, they're just bigger. Look at these bucket seats. Now they are fully adjustable on both sides of the vehicle. Uh, these are the same exact controls I have on the uh, on the driver's side. Uh, you can adjust you can adjust your lumbar support, uh, front, back, side to side, up and down, whatever you need. Now these headlights and daytime running lights are just sweet, man. Uh, at night, when you turn them on, they're like two little eyeballs. They swerve left and right to kind of scan the area. And then as you're driving, they kind of turn in the direction that you're turning so they can light up the road as you turn so you can see where you're going. Man, that's gangster. Now, first, I got to buckle up for safety because I live in Houston and these fools are crazy. Well, let's go for a little ride, man. Hit that tap to start. All right, we're just going to talk about the things I really love about this car. So, I don't know. Where should we start? First of all, when you get in it, it just it just welcomes you, man. It's like, hey, daddy, welcome back. I missed you. Uh, the motor's super quiet and the interior's super quiet. So even when you have the music off, uh, of course you hear road noise. You're in a car. But uh, they, they really do a nice job of isolating you from whatever is going on out there in the road. And uh, the ride is super smooth, man. It has uh, three different modes. It has tour, which is basically what I drive in most of the time. And then there's uh, sport mode and then there's snow and ice. I've never used the snow and ice, but I love that sport mode, man. You know, I'm a grown man, mature adult, but every once in a while I get a little childish and I want to make some moves around the city and uh, I want to do it real fast. So I put in that sport mode and it tighten up the suspension. I think it's really just the, the suspension that really changes when you put it in sport mode. It just kind of hugs the corners a little bit better and keeps everything nice and on the ground and tight. Me and the family, uh, about two weeks ago, we went to Austin, which is about, which is about, um, I don't know, two, two and a half hours away from where we live. And uh, man, let me tell you, it was the most comfortable, enjoyable trip to Austin back and forth daytime and nighttime driving that I've ever had man it was so smooth man I was doing about this and you know what I did the speed limit I was doing about 65 to somewhere around I guess between 65 and 80 the whole way and it felt like I was just cruising at 40 the whole time but not in a bad way like I wasn't ever going to get there it was just a nice enjoyable experience man I really can't explain it in, in any other way I mean the ride was quiet we were listening to music and I didn't have to blast the music to uh to i didn't have to turn the music up to drown out the road noise but we can still hear each other speaking of music man this thing has some type of uh, noise canceling in the stereo system i looked it up and it does have some type of noise canceling which is cool uh because when your music is on it like seriously tunes out all the traffic like I, you can't hear no traffic in this thing when, when the music is up and i ain't talking about turning it up loud i'm just talking about you know at, at you know at a decent listening volume you really can't hear any other road noise like right now i can hear the road outside uh just a little bit because i mean it's isolated well but when you turn the music up you know a couple of notches it just all goes away it's like you're in a set of headphones or something it's so cool all right now since i'm at this light uh this this next feature i want to talk about just kicked in it has this uh this button right here this it's a with a little circle around it it's some type of automatic start stop feature Oh man, I got this motorcycle behind me, man. He's making some moves. 
All right, so I got this guy next to me on this loud ass bike. I mean, he is, this is like a Honda. What it is? What? It, this is a Honda. Uh, looks like looks like a 600. Anyways, he's got this uh, muffler on here, and it's ridiculously loud. Um, I ride motorcycles myself, and yes, those suckers need to be loud so motorists can hear you. But right now, I'm doing a video, and this guy's annoying me. So I hope he turns off or just takes off. There you go. He's gone. Get it. Get it. Oh man. Okay. Anyways, so back to my review. Uh, this automatic start and stop feature. Um, yeah. So basically, it's just to you know save on gas and be better for the uh, for the for the environment. So when you come to a complete stop, the engine kind of shuts off and goes into a standby mode until you take your foot off the brake. Now that took some getting used to because I'm coming from a uh, 2007 Escalade and uh, it was a V8. So lots of power, it had a nice little rumble, and you always knew it was running. <laughs> so when I got in this thing, you know, it felt like the car had broken, you know, the first time. So I figured out that's what it was. But, you know, I've grown to really actually like it. Uh, I, I just think that, you know, with the transmission and everything, I feel like they need to do a better job in making it seamless to where you don't even know it's there. Now, I'm not talking about when the car shuts off and you know it's off. I'm just talking about the transition between the motor being off and on because it's kind of clunky. You can feel kind of... You know like a knock or a jerk in the uh, in the transmission or a drivetrain or whatever anyways it's not a big deal because it's still it's a it's still a soft feel being that it's a luxury car you know I think they probably could have did a better job with that but um, what do I want to talk about next oh yeah it's got the lane keeper in there so if you're swerving in the lanes it actually kind of bumps you back into the lane you're supposed to be in so that's really nice that uh, you know you have that feature you know no you're not supposed to be texting and driving but for some reason if you take your eyes off the road and, uh, you know, God forbid you start, you know, veering off the road and stuff like that. This car can actually save your life. Speaking of life-saving features, man, this is, it's, it, it's almost autonomous. Um, if you come up to an approaching, if you start approaching an object, whether it be a car, person, or whatever, and it senses that you do not have your foot on the brake, it'll start flashing up here on this heads-up display. Uh, hey, something's up front. Hit the brake, fool. So, you know, it kind of wakes you up, and the chair vibrates and everything, and then you got your... Uh, your driver and passenger rear view mirrors that tell you when people are in your blind spots over here on the sides that way you know if you're trying to get over something you can just you know it's got this little flashing light saying hey don't do that just yet somebody's over there man chill out um you've got your your rear view camera when you put the car in reverse you know it opens up the camera and you can see everything back there and it has these guidelines that actually swerve or move with you as you turn so that's cool you know if you're trying to park you're a terrible backer up type of type of parker uh no more excuses because this car actually has the lines that will turn with you and tell you exactly where this car is going to end up so i thought that was pretty cool so let's move on to the motor again so this car has two options uh you got the 2.0 liter turbo and then you got a 3.6 liter uh v6 now the 2.0 liter is a four cylinder i actually chose this one because for some reason i feel like this one had more giddy up to it uh, it has a little bit less horsepower than the 3.6 but for some reason i just feel like this one has a little bit more torque when you put your foot in the pedal you know it moves and that turbo kicks in and you feel like you like you know and gone in 60 seconds or something like that um so I, I just preferred this motor right here such a small motor but it's got some kick to it man i've only taken this thing up to about 94 miles an hour and it got there so fast it actually kind of freaked me out and you know being that i was going that fast and it only felt like i was going about 40 you know it freaked me out so i slowed down and i chickened out <laughs> <laughs> so I, I haven't been past 94 don't plan on doing any more than that anytime soon I just wanted to see what this baby could do but uh, you got this gauge cluster up here it's real informative you can kind of customize it to whatever you want to see you know I've got my engine boost on my left and then I got my speed you know of course you got your traditional speedometer but I got speed right here too then I got my fuel economy so the gauge cluster is cool you know it's not too crazy and fancy to where you know you have to like look for a long time to find what you need and that brings me over to this infotainment system. So I love this infotainment system. I didn't even have one in the Escalade, but when I got in this thing, I was like, man, that is cool. I mean, you got all different types of features. Right now I'm in basically the, the radio mode. So it tells you what song you're listening to. Uh, oh, Best You Ever Had by John Legend, man. And that's a good song. I would turn it up, but I don't want to have no copyright claims. That's a good song, man. Anyways, everything is touchscreen here. And the whole panel over here is basically touch. And you can swipe up and swipe down for your volume. To navigate through this thing is actually pretty simple. It's going to be a learning curve if you've, if you've driven anything other than, you know, a Q vehicle. 
But once you get the swing of it, which is actually in a matter of a day or two, uh, everything's gonna be nice, man. You got your phone functions right here. You got your, uh, what is this? This is your compass and your navigation. Now the navigation, if you're used to using your phone like I am, this ain't nothing like Google. But like I said, everything's a learning curve. I got used to it and now, um, I just use this instead of, you know, Google Maps and stuff like that, which I'll get back to in a second when it comes to Google. Of course, you got your uh, climate controls here. You can go in here in depth and do stuff or you can just, you know, tap right here if you need to. And of course, you can read your text message and stuff like that. Get out of my business. We ain't doing my text anyway. So that's cool. Let's talk about build materials, man. Now, Cadillac went through this phase uh, for about a decade, decade and a half, man. And this is still the period where, you know, I'm, from the 2007 Escalade I was driving. So right before that 2007 Escalade, uh, I really don't think they, they kind of just fell off, man. They were making, in my opinion, trash cars, man. It just didn't stand up to the Cadillac standard. But after 2007 and beyond, now, I mean, this is all my opinion. I feel like they started focusing on the body again. Now everything from 2007 and up, oh man, it's so fly. My Escalade, I love the look of that truck, man. Even the 2007 through 2014 Escalades still stand up to the newer Escalades today, the, that square style. They still look good. And in my opinion, they, they kind of look better, to be honest with you. So the outside design of Cadillacs were, were, you know, coming in again, you know, for that Cadillac, you know, they were actually coming back like, hey, we're Cadillac. We ain't went nowhere. We just, you know, we're dormant for a little bit. But the interior quality and design sucked. Now, my Escalade, I don't know if it was because it was an SUV slash truck. It had the worst, cheapest build materials in there, man. It was plastic all over that thing. It was like, you know, this faux leather vinyl plastic. It was literally like hard plastic that was designed to look like leather and vinyl. And I felt like, dang, this is like a $70,000 vehicle. And he put all this dang plastic in here. And then when I realized, you know, when it was time for me to take it apart, put my new radio in and stuff, it's just some cheap, cheap plastic, man. I was really disgusted with the choice of Cadillac's build materials in that truck. The only thing that was any good was the actual leather on the seats as far as build material. It, all, it made all kinds of rickety, crickety sounds and stuff like that. And it was just cheap, man. And I don't know about the cars, you know, from, from that era. You know if they had the same build materials but you know in my escalade i was really disappointed in cadillac i'm a cadillac dude but i was really disappointed in you know their choice of build materials and quality on the interior of the cars um but when i stepped into this thing and all the newer uh uh and all the newer cadillacs i feel like man okay now they're spending some money and some time investing into these cars on the interior the exterior goes without saying when you drive down the road next to a mercedes bmw audi any car out there with the exception of maybe one of those lexus lexus has a kind of a futuristic design on the front but when you put this thing in my this is my opinion again when you put this thing next to a bmw mercedes and audi and you look at that front of the car the front of the car design this one will stand out. Cadillac has radically changed their design to be more aggressive. And you may or may not like that aggressive look. I love it. Uh, it looks like, you know, if you had a black CTS, you're gonna look like you're driving a Batmobile. I chose white because it's just so gangster. Um, but, you know, back on the inside, I love the build materials and quality on the inside because once you get in here, it just says luxury. Well, you've got up here, this is actually, I think this is vinyl, right? And then you've got, actually you've got some leather right here and everything's plush so it's not you know it's not that plastic hard stuff everything's plush where you can push it and it's soft um you got this glossy plastic uh right here not too much of it not overkill and then you got your chrome trim right here this, this is probably plastic but um but the quality of it is far superior to what they've been using and uh let me see here You've got this vinyl and stitching everywhere, man, like in the doors. In the Escalade, there was no stitching. You knew it was plastic, so they didn't even try to front there. It was just plastic. But here on the doors, you can't see it while I'm driving, but um, you got leather up top here, and then you got some new buck kind of stuff. It's like that suede material that you find on some Timberland boots or something. And then they mixed it with some vinyl on the bottom because it's more durable, but they still carry on the stitching throughout the entire door. You've got stitching to make it feel and look like, you know, leather. I don't know. This, yeah, this is actually leather. And then there's a leather, vinyl, and suede mix on the door. That's amazing. As far as build materials, man, this thing is so, so plush. Everything is soft and, and comfortable and inviting. You got your cool seats and and heated seat options 
which are going to be real nice in the summer and winter when you want to warm this thing up real quick. Of course, you got your heated steering wheel. The leather is wrapped around the steering wheel all the way. There's no wood or nothing. It's just all leather and it's plush. And uh, oh my God, the stitching. The stitching is just outrageous, man. They did a good job and, and all the stitching, it just makes it feel like quality. What can I say, man? The car is just awesome. Oh yeah, back to the infotainment system and uh, Google. So in here, if you got an Android phone with wireless charging, you can just you know tap that little Chrome uh, little deal right there. Uh oh, I closed it. Anyway, you can tap it, it opens up, and you stick your phone in there, and it will start wirelessly charging. Now it's not fast wireless charging, but hey, thanks for thinking of me, man. I think everything's built for iPhones, and I think that's a nice touch. You can just stick your phone in there and uh, charge it up that way now will i make a complaint man and this is for this night just for cadillac this is for all um automotive makers start making slots for cell phones man and, and sunglasses there's not one single spot in this car where you can have easy access to your sunglasses like up here up here or somewhere in a pocket so i had to buy me a little something for my sunglasses and my phone all right i want to share this with y'all real quick let's say you don't really care for the infotainment system right you go ahead and plug your phone into any one of these usb ports in here you got one in there and two in your little console right here and once you plugged it in if you got android auto on your phone then it automatically kind of just you know takes control of your phone and then uh let's see you hit the home button right here it pops up android auto right here if this wasn't here it would say mirror and uh, or a screen share or something like that so you hit that and all of a sudden android auto starts popping up uh, it also do it all and it also does Apple CarPlay the exact same way. So you got two options, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Once again, Cadillac, GM, thanks for thinking about the Android users. So you got your, uh, your Android Auto right here, and it's just as seamless as anything else. You can go into your navigation if you prefer to use that versus you know what Cadillac has you know, got in here for you. You can go in here to your music, or you can actually just go right back into your uh, return to Cadillac queue and keep it moving that way. So you got plenty of options here as far as infotainment, I guess you would call it. Uh, Bluetooth works great. You know, uh, I've used Bluetooth up to about, I don't know, maybe 50, 60 miles an hour on one of the nicer uh, part of our freeways. And it actually sounds really good coming in and out uh, as far as the calls. Uh, so the Bluetooth, they've actually done a really good job of it. And uh, overall, I just really love this car, man. It's been a month. I have absolutely no buyer's remorse. Um, gotta say hands down the best car coolest car i've ever owned uh and once again i'm coming from a escalade so you know it was an 07 escalade i have my gripes about that thing but coming from a, a big full-size suv down to this you know mid-size sedan you know it, you would expect there to be some type of change or you know i don't know some type of emotions there but man no regrets whatsoever people ask me all the time hey man you miss your escalate i'm like hell no I miss my escalate you see this car <laughs> but i did do some shopping though you know because the first um the first one i drove with my was my wife's cts and it's just like this one so we got his and her cts's uh and i really liked it and i just knew cadillac had other cars in the lineup so then i drove i drove the ats coupe I said, man, this is great, but it was just a little bit too small as far as the interior room, because I'm not a small guy. Uh, but I love how that that 2.0 liter motor, you know, scooted that car around. I said, man, if I could find a CTS in a coupe, and I then that's when I realized they don't even make the coupe no more in the CTS. Uh, if you want a coupe, you got to go to the ATS. Uh, so the ATS is out because I just couldn't do that size of the car. Great car, it just doesn't come with as much luxury, you know, even when you dress it up didn't want the v model or nothing like that um and then the next car would have been well, the xts or whatever that is it was completely out of the question i feel like that was an old, older person's car and then i checked out the um the uh, ct6 i checked that one out um I, I like it it's a great looking car and it's one of those cars i saw on the videos and everything and it was amazing i, I even saw it on the road man i was like wow look at that car but when i actually drove it fantastic car man i just think that the motor uh i just think the car needs a little bit more power the interior room was just a little too much and um i just didn't need all that room like i said i don't have small children and you know it's just usually just me and the wife or just me and i just didn't need all that room and i, I like the i feel like this interior is a little bit more luxurious than the ct6 and this once again personal opinion um because it's you know it's more closed in and, and more cockpitish so, and that, that brings me to my point here. I didn't want a big car, a big family car. This feels like it's a sports luxury car. 
more of a luxury car than a sport car, but if I want to flip it around, I can. And uh, that's why I chose the CTS. And like I said, absolutely no buyer's remorse. It's been about a month and I have been driving the holy hell out of this car. I feel like it's a head turner. I, you know, I definitely get a few looks. I have opted not to put tin on this thing. I just feel like it looks better, you know, as a white vehicle or as a luxury vehicle with no tint. And that's another thing I wanted to talk about. When you get a luxury car, when you get a car, period, you really want it to come with, you know, pretty much everything you were looking for. Uh, you know, I've kind of grown out of, you know, putting new radios in my car and putting wheels on my car and stuff like that. That's not something that really interests me. So when I see this and it's got everything, man, the stereo system in this thing is absolutely ridiculous. I'm talking about bass that shakes your kneecaps. Like it, it, it gets all up underneath you, man. And while you got all that bass coming at you, I can turn this thing up. I think is the high, the numbers is 60. I can turn it up to about 50, right? And you can still hear the bass. It does not distort. And the highs and mids are there. You can EQ it however you want to. And the highs and mids are there. And the system sounds amazing, man. So I have no desire, absolutely no desire to do anything as far as adding speakers, amps, and changing out stereos or nothing like that. I mean, don't touch it. It's, it's perfect the way it is. Good job, Cadillac. Um, as far as the wheels, it is what it is. I got these aluminum wheels on here. I think they're uh, 18 inch, you know, and uh, with the run flat tires and stuff. From what I understand, the run flat tires actually made a, make it ride a little bit rougher. Um, it is what it is. I feel like it's a pretty smooth ride right now. So if it gets smoother, if I decide to put regular tires on there, awesome, I'll take it. Um, but yeah, as far as like getting a car and not having to do anything to it, this is it. If you gonna want a car, and you want everything that you can do to a car, get the Cadillac CTS Luxury Edition because uh, there's really nothing else to do to this car. Wheels, uh, radio, no, no aftermarket stuff. Like, And it's funny because you go online and you look at aftermarket stuff for this car, I really haven't found anything. I mean, they sell dash kits and stuff like that, but why would you put a dash kit on here? They don't really sell many accessories for this thing. Um, you know, you might be able to find some floor mats, cool floor mats, but you know, as far as like dress up stuff, mm -mm. no, man, you buy this car and it is what it is. You just leave it alone because they made it perfect. And that's why I chose it. It was kind of like a Goldilocks thing. You know, I went to the Cadillac dealer. I tried the ATS coupe, too small. I tried the, uh, the CT6, too big. Then I tried mama's bed, which was the same car mama has at home, right? I tried mama's bed and it was perfect. So... <laughs> So it was kind of like a Goldilocks thing. Tried all three, ended up liking the one in the middle. Uh, hands down, coolest thing ever, man. I love this car, and I'm going to keep on driving the hell out of it. I ain't never claimed to be an expert in this kind of stuff. I just wanted to show y'all which car I actually picked, uh, because some of y'all actually were thinking that I might own the CT6 or the, uh, or the ATS Coupe. Don't own either, either of those cars. This was my car of choice, and uh, I'm rolling with it. Anyway, before I go, I'm going to need y'all to tap on that like button and smash on that subscribe button, and I'll see y'all at the next one.